Hey y'all, welcome to Science and Engineering and KSP Episode 6. I'm your host, Andy Leonard, and today we're going to talk a little bit about in-plane maneuvers. Now, I would have liked to have covered in-plane and out-of-plane maneuvers and more in this episode, but this week has been crazy and I simply have not had the time or focus to spare. Uh, I whipped this episode pretty quickly in order to give it, get it up over the weekend, uh, so it might be a little bit shorter than I'd like, and I will try and make that up to you in the next week. So, maneuvers. Let's take another look at the Vis Viva equation, which of course you now know by heart, and if you don't, check out episode four. We can do some uh, kind of funky math to it uh, to get a quick and dirty estimate of how our semi-major axis changes when we apply delta V. If we keep R fixed and symbolically differentiate the variables on both sides, we can find that 2 V dV is equal to mu over A squared dA, which we can then rearrange to get dA equals 2 A squared over mu times V dV. This equation tells us that for a small change in velocity, we get a change in semi-major axis proportional to the semi-major axis mu and initial velocity. Of course, this is an estimate um, that assumes small delta V and dA compared to their initial values, and it also assumes instantaneous application of the delta V, but it's a pretty neat little trick. What's really cool about this approximation is that we can use it to figure out how our apsides distances change when we burn at the other apside. When you burn at apoapse or periapse, that radius stays fixed, that apoapse or periapse radius. Your changing of the semi-major axis is basically a measure of the change in radius of the opposite apside. And what we get is that the change in apoapse distance is equal to 4a squared over mu uh, vp uh, velocity at periapse times delta v applied at periapse. And the converse is true for periapse. The change in altitude of your periapse is equal to 4a squared over mu velocity at apoapse delta v applied at apoapse. Uh, let's check and see if this is a good approximation. So we are in our popular uh, 100 kilometer circular orbit and our velocity is 2245.9 meters per second. Let's say we wanted to apply a delta v of 50 meters per second and uh, see how much, uh, like how high would our apoapse be? Um, so in circular orbits, remember apoapse and periapse are pretty poorly defined, so anywhere you burn, basically, if you're burning prograde, you're going to create an apoapse on the opposite side. So let's say we want to do 50 meters per second, and then we find that if we burn 50 meters per second, we'll get a apoapse uh, altitude or a change in apoapse altitude of uh, 62,326 kilometers. Now, we have about 1,400 meters per second of delta V. I'm just going to try and burn until this says 1,350. And we're in the dark, so math view is probably more interesting. Yeah, so 1,350, and our new apoapse height is 161 kilometers, which is pretty close. It was a pretty good approximation. Um, I did a very slow and steady burn there because I didn't want to overshoot and 50 meters per second is basically nothing with the uh, engine that I have here. But um, other than that, it wasn't too bad of an approximation. So yeah, I mean, it's not quite exact, but knowing these relationships is pretty handy for just back of the envelope calculations. So I bet by now you're pretty tired of watching me just burn prograde we have our pick of three whole different dimensions. And here I am just putzing about with the one point. And even though we're talking about maneuvers in the orbital plane, we still have a whole 360 degree range of possible directions to pick and burn, to burn towards. Um, surely not all maneuvers are executed along this prograde and retrograde line, right? Well, right. Uh, as it turns out, the handy home and transfer that we like to burn is just a special case of the equations governing coplanar, meaning in the same plane, transfers where the burns all happen to take place with a zero flight path angle, which, as we learned, is the angle between the prograde vector and the local horizontal. What that means geometrically is that we do all of our circularization maneuvers at apoapse, 
Now, this is a pretty efficient way to do things, but there are reasons why you wouldn't always want to do a home and transfer. For example, you might not have the maneuvering capability um, to turn and point precisely prograde. So in KSP, if you have a small, smallish craft and a decent reaction wheel, you can pretty much point wherever you want, like I'm doing here, and I'm just you know going wee all over. But um, in real life, there are constraints on how fast and where you can point because these reaction wheels, they can get saturated. And what that means is basically they lose their sense of direction. And when that happens, you're screwed. Um, also, you might want to keep your spacecraft pointed in the same general direction as it's been pointing and not rotate too much to, uh, you know, go prograde or go retrograde or wherever you want to go. Um, so you can make sure like your solar panels are getting enough sunlight or uh, to keep an area on the surface of the spacecraft pointing away from the sun for thermal considerations. Like for, you know, if I cared about uh, the Kerbal Engineer panel here and I wanted to keep it away from the sun because, you know, I was an idiot and I have it exposed to the vacuum of space, then, you know, I've got to point it this way, right? So to demonstrate what a transfer looks like, let's look at a case of a spacecraft deorbiting. Now, for whatever reason, we don't want to totally point retrograde, which would uh, slow us down and deorbit us uh, quickly and efficiently, um, but we want to lower our periaps to 630 kilometers or an altitude of 30 kilometers and get back home. So starting from our 100 kilometer circular orbit, let's pick a transfer orbit with an apoapse of 600 kilometers and a periaps of 30 kilometers. And so what you can see there is that the periaps of this new of this transfer orbit is going to be inside of our original orbit and the apoapse is going to be outside. And that's pretty important. I'm, I don't think I have enough time to, to completely talk about this today, but we're just going to demonstrate how this works. So now what we need to do is figure out some of the characteristics of the transfer orbit. We have a semi-major axis of 915 kilometers and eccentricity of 0.3115 specific mechanical energy of negative 1.93 million joules per kilogram and a specific angular momentum of 1.7 billion meters per second, meters squared per second, sorry. Uh, if we want to stretch out our orbit and lower its periaps, we're going to have to apply a delta V somewhere. And we can do this at pretty much any point, remember, since we're circular. What we need uh, is the velocity that our current radius would give us in this new orbit. So we can rearrange the vis viva equation to show that the new velocity would be 2496.119 meters per second, but our delta v won't be just that velocity minus our circular velocity. That would be the case if we were firing directly prograde, but remember we don't want to do that, so we're going to have to do a little trig to figure out how much delta v we need to apply. Let's zoom in. So, um, since we are traveling, let's see here, which way are we traveling? We're traveling around to the dark side of the planet. And since we're traveling that way, our velocity vector is that. And basically what we need to do is we need to maneuver so that our velocity vector is pointing somewhere out here, right? Because when we do that, we get an orbit that brings us out there and around and back in. Hopefully that makes sense. So there's an angle in between those two, and you might remember that's the flight path angle. Now our flight path angle for a circular orbit is always zero, but that's not going to be the case for our new velocity. So the formula for, one of the formulas I should say for orbital angular momentum is um, h equals rv cosine phi, where phi is the flight path angle. And so what we can do is we can rearrange and plug in the, ang the uh, angular momentum that we know, plug in our radius that we know, and plug in the velocity that we want to achieve, and we find that we're going to end up pointed at a flight path angle of 12.14 degrees, so like about here with respect to the prograde marker. We're going to be you know pointed here once we finish our burn. And so using the law of cosines, what we can do is we can figure out that our delta v is equal to our original velocity 
plus the velocity we want to get into, both squared, um, minus two, uh, the velocities times each other times the cosine of this angle. And we take the square root of all that. And when we do that, we find that we're going to need a delta V of 560 meters per second. So how do we figure out where exactly we need to be pointing? So how do we figure out where exactly we need to be pointing to execute this maneuver? Our flight path angle doesn't tell us that because it's just going to tell us the angle between those two velocities and not where we need to burn. What we need to do is we need to consider the tangential and the radial velocity of our different um, orbits. So in a circular orbit, your uh, tangential velocity, or I should say your radial velocity, sorry, is zero because all of your velocity is directed that way. Um, but if our orbit were going out this way, we would have a tangential velocity uh, component pointed here, and then we would have a radial component pointed uh, here, and then they would there would be kind of a resultant vector. And so to find the angle that we need to fire at, what we need to do is find the difference of those angles, divide them, and take the arc tangent. And when we do that, we get, uh, we're going to have to point at an angle of 69.72 degrees. So basically about here. Let's see. Yeah. So we are pointing almost completely outward from the planet. But this attitude combined with the delta V we apply will give us the orbit that we want to achieve, a uh, descent orbit. So I think that's, that's uh, enough set up. Let's, uh, let's give it a go. And we are going to burn, since uh, we're burning 560 meters per second, we're going to burn until this says 840. And then we'll see how we did. Oh, I'm slipping up a little bit past 70, uh, which is a little bit too high. It's important to uh, make sure you watch the nap ball as you're doing these maneuvers because uh, you, can, you can change your attitude by burning, and you don't want to do that. All right, we overshot a little bit, 828 meters per second, and our apoapse is 626 kilometers. That's 26 kilometers off of our what we originally wanted, and our periapse is 30 kilometers. So just by firing in uh, a non-retrograde direction, we've gone ahead and we've lowered our orbit periapse gently into the uh, into the atmosphere so we will deorbit and we did it safely and we didn't have to do all kinds of crazy uh, pointing things that could uh, that could put us in jeopardy and you know put our reaction wheels in danger and put parts of the spacecraft in danger we didn't have to do any of that well um, sad to say that's it for this week um, like I said I will try and have uh, more better content next week. I just really wanted to get something out for y'all this week. Uh, I hope you had fun watching it. I had fun making it, even though it was a little hectic. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys next week.